Hey everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to the season one series, The Real Housewives of Potomac, season one, episode eight, All Shades of Shade. All right, this episode opens up with Giselle. She is starting her own skincare line, and she's meeting with a doctor, and uh, they've got all these formulas in front of her. She said that she always has to mix foundations to get the right shade and the right um, everything for her skin so that it's not chalky or I guess she's got very sensitive skin as well, and she breaks out with some foundations. So they're working on a formula for black women, I guess all women of color. And the next step is to have a focus group. So she is going to invite the other housewives (laughs) to a focus group and uh, to try out her new product and other friends, I guess. But the doctor's like, okay, I'm going to work on the formula. Giselle's job is to work on packaging and a name for the product. So Giselle comes up with Caramel Cutie. (laughs) It's just so funny and like so bad because I'm assuming this is a doctor, right? Or some kind of a scientist. She's got a lab coat on. She's uh, testing some on Giselle's jawline and she's like, oh, okay, no, I guess you, your skin is much more uh, caramel tone. So she's picking something else up. So because she says caramel, I think that that's why Giselle goes, how about caramel cutie? And this doctor is like, um, you know, yes, but maybe your 40-year-old client would want something a little more mature sounding. And Giselle goes, you're right. How about just buy it? (laughs) All right, we are at Katie's house and it is the twins' birthday. Catherine and Renee, they're two or they're turning three. I don't know. They're either two and turning three or they're just turning two. Katie is weird, you guys. She's just weird. Now she's telling Andrew about the girls' weekend, and she says, I was so happy when Michael showed up. Were you? She thinks that the sister circle was too serious, and she just wanted to have fun. Okay, maybe, but you didn't give off a very fun vibe at all, Katie. You were a little bit of a stick in the mud the whole time. Oh, guess what? She's putting her charity on hold for a few months. It's not like every single woman you talk to told you that you can't do this in two weeks and that you're insane, but you kept saying, no, you don't have faith in me. Oh, now you're going to postpone it. She claims that she's just so busy helping other people with their events And also she's the spokeswoman for, I don't know, she's hosting DC Swim Week or something, whatever that is. According to Katie, she's got such a great reputation in the area that everybody wants to be seen with her. Yeah, so her job right now for the Rost Foundation is to be seen around town. Good job, Katie. Now we're at Karen's house and she is there with her assistant, Annie. Where is Annie when Karen needs all kinds of other help? I thought her only assistant was Ray. Uh, but no, Annie is there helping her with her charity event, the O Gala, which is for her mother in law who passed away a year ago from Alzheimer's. So it is an event to raise awareness for Alzheimer's and they are, uh, she and Annie are figuring out the details like with uh, entertainment and flowers and stuff like that. Okay, now it's Giselle's focus group party, I guess. And she has a couple makeup artists there. Cal makes another appearance. Yep. And when Karen shows up, he apologizes profusely to her. He tells her that he's sorry for being so abrasive and he shouldn't have spoken that way and stuff like that. So I guess Karen accepts his apology. Do you guys remember that Karen wanted to (laughs) call security? So Giselle gives her pitch to the other ladies. Her makeup is for women of color who struggle finding makeup that isn't too chalky or ashy or makes them break out. They all seem to like it, although Karen does throw some shade by saying, basically, this is what Bare Minerals or Queen is already doing, but I'll support Giselle. Side note, Katie is a no-show. And Giselle thinks that that's quite rude of her for not even, um, I guess, calling and letting her know she's not coming. 
apparently Giselle doesn't realize that Katie needs to be seen out and about for the Rost Foundation. So Ashley sits down with Karen and, you know, it gets a little heated. Ashley's like, are you still mad at me? Because I think you're really making too much of this thing with Michael. Karen thinks that it was wildly inappropriate that Michael showed up at a girl's weekend. And Ashley made her guests feel uncomfortable. Giselle doesn't want them fighting at her focus group, so that kind of goes nowhere. They, like, agree to let the men duke it out, basically. Now there's a scene with Robin and Juan at their house. And Juan is trying to put together this... I guess, storage box for the kids um, to put their sports equipment in. And I love this scene, you guys, because I think I love Juan. I want them to get back together. I am falling in love with Robin and Juan. Juan is adorable. He's got these deep dimples when he smiles. It's so cute. They were kind of reminiscing about, Robin said it was funny that she, the girls weekend, she had to sleep in a twin bed. And she goes, and I was thinking in college, you and I used to sleep in a twin bed. I couldn't believe it, but it was a little nostalgic for me. So then they start talking about how how they first met and they're being very cute about it and everything and then he tells Robin that she's the love of his life I love it I want them together I mean Robin said that he cheated on her and I hate that and so now she's very guarded I guess he does want to get back together but she's like extremely guarded now I don't blame her my god she's had a couple people now very close to her that have betrayed her trust so I mean I get it Oh, the next scene is golfing with the Hugers and the Darbies. Ugh. For some reason, Ashley has her hair twisted on top of her head like Sideshow Bob. I don't know why. It's like spilling over her visor. <laughs> she looks cute all the time anyway, but I was like, hmm, okay. So they're golfing, and Michael says to Ray, if you can explain to me what was wrong with me showing up at the beach house, I'll apologize. And Ray said, the problem was, when my wife goes for a girls weekend, I don't expect guys to show up and make her feel uncomfortable. Michael says, okay, I'm with you up until the point when you said uncomfortable. Ray says, well, because I assume they're walking around in skimpy outfits because they're girls. I don't need you to see my wife in a skimpy outfit. Oh, Ray, I think that's so sweet, but nobody wants to see Karen in a skimpy outfit. Especially not Michael. His wife is 27, Ray. He's not looking at Karen. But, you know, uh, the guys end up shaking hands, and I guess they're fine. Now we're at Charisse's house, and she is turning 50, and she's going to learn how to swim. She has the most gorgeous backyard pool, you guys. I can't believe she hasn't wanted to learn before now. All right, now we're back with Karen and her assistant, Annie, and they are at the florist looking for cherry blossoms for the event. I should say, earlier, Ray came in, and um, he asked Annie to leave the room, and he very sweetly explained to Karen that he did not want this event to be a huge deal because he and his sisters were still very tender. His mother's passing was, was, I guess, just a year ago, and he's not looking for a whole bunch of people there and a giant event. So Karen begrudgingly agreed to tone it down. So now she wants cherry blossoms, and they're saying, no, we don't have them. And Annie's like, well, surely you can have them flown in from somewhere. And he goes, no. They only blossom in the spring, so nobody has them anywhere. So Karen settles for 89 roses because Ray's mother was 89 when she passed away. All right, so the guests are arriving, including Brene. Good God, she's on camera more than Elise and Barbara Kay combined. I mean, she has really almost been in every single episode as a friend of. I wonder if she becomes a real housewife. Maybe next year? You guys can tell me in the comments. I don't care. I don't consider that to be like a huge spoiler. Like I said, guests are arriving. Katie gets there, and she's throwing shade at how understated everything looks. And remember, Karen toned everything down for Ray's sake. But Katie's like, oh, Karen was too busy to help me with my gala because she was doing what exactly? 
So snotty. Of course, during Ray and Karen's speech, when everyone's quiet and listening, that's when Ashley and Michael arrive and ring the doorbell repeatedly. So now Giselle goes and sits with Ashley at a table, and Giselle said, I heard Ray gave Michael the business when you guys were golfing. And Ashley said, No, if anything, Michael shut Ray down. And Giselle goes, So Michael gave Ray the business? And Ashley goes, No, there was no business to give. In her confessional, Ashley said, If Karen is going to go around telling people that Ray gave Michael the business, then I have to wonder, what other lies has Karen devised? So Ashley tells her, Karen's hair looks very nice. It's been slipping a bit, but it looks good tonight. God. You are playing with fire, girl. What is wrong with her? I thought you wanted to be in the inner circle. Ashley's getting a little too bold, I think. Then she tells all the ladies that Karen is keeping her daughter, Raven, away from them because they would corrupt her. And we see a flashback to Karen and Ashley in the car on the way up to Bethany. And Ashley said something like, I would like to get to know Raven. And Karen said, well, uh, no, children are off limits. And I think children should be influenced by their peers. And you're just too old for her. So Giselle's like, why wouldn't she want her daughter around me? I'm an upstanding lady. (laughs) Oh, God. So now Karen approaches. Robin said, Ashley said you don't want us around your daughter. Karen, what? Ashley, what are you drinking? I never said that. And Ashley goes, you said you didn't want Raven hanging around with us. Karen, Ashley, I said I don't want Raven hanging around you specifically. Love it. That she says, I am done with you. And she turns on her heels and walks away. Ashley and Michael end up leaving the party early. And ooh, Ashley is back in the doghouse with Karen. And that's it for this episode, you guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you are liking the season one series. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. I appreciate it very much. Leave a comment down below. Um, Let me know what you think about everything. (laughs) All right. I will see you next week for the next recap of season one Potomac. See you then.